thoughts on television. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my fine wife, Bev, and I was... Having fun. Having fun. Best way to live. But we have fun all the time. Yes, we do. And we want to have fun tonight because this is such a good teaching. Yes, it is. We want you to The title is entitled, What You Should Be Thinking About Every Day, Forever, Forever. When you wake up in the morning, what are you thinking about? Be mindful of Proverbs 23, 7. Hallelujah. New King James. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We decide how and what we think about, mm. and our thinking habits make up really and determine who we are right. and what we do. Did you ever wonder what winners think about? Did you ever think about that? I just ask you. <laughs> I love it. Here are seven things you should think about today and every day forever. You know, if you're seeking a winner's mentality. In fact, it's also a great way to have the best day possible. Number one, wisdom. One of my favorite scriptures from my wisdom mentor and dear friend, Dr. Mike Murdoch, mm. it's Proverbs 4, 7. 4, 7, classic amplified Bible says, the beginning of wisdom is get wisdom, skillful and godly wisdom. For skillful and godly wisdom is the principal thing. With all you've gotten, get understanding, discernment, comprehension, and interpretation. If you want to be a winner in life, then you need an insatiable hunger for wisdom. You must want wisdom more than your favorite television show. You must want wisdom more than reading your the post of your friends and tweets, things like that on Facebook, Twitter, Save Your Connector social media. Hallelujah. You must want wisdom more than watching the latest game of your sports team. You must want wisdom more than anything else other than your time with the Holy Spirit, which is how you increase wisdom. That's it. How do you get wisdom? Same thing you get anything else you want. You ask for it. You seek it. And you pursue it every day. Passionately. That passionately is right. James 1 5, 1 5, classic amplified Bible. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask God of the giving. Let him ask of the giving God. I'm sorry. Let's do it again. If any of you are deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given him. Hallelujah. No surprise, but if you don't ask for it, you won't get it. But if you do, you will. James 4 2, 4 2, New Living Translation. Yet you don't have what you want because you didn't ask God for it. Number two, plans. Being a winner in your family or your job or your marriage or investments, or it just isn't going to happen because you're a nice person or even because you love the Lord. You must have a plan. In Proverbs 16, 3, in the New Living Translation, you ought to read it in the Classic Amplified too, though, says, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. That means he's directing your efforts. Each day is a gift. What are your plans for this precious treasure of time that God has given you every morning when you wake up? Do you maximize your time and effectiveness? Is your attitude, well, another day, another dollar? Or do you have a plan to turn your finances from lack to abundance and your life from average to excellent? If you don't like where you are in life right now, chances are that you just don't know something yet. Keep seeking that wisdom. So what's your plan to move from where you are to where you want to be? Are you asking God daily to show you what to do next? That's what that Proverbs scripture is about. In Proverbs 19, 21, it also says, Many are the plans in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose that will prevail. So here are a few things that we suggest. First, seek the Lord, His wisdom, understanding, and favor. In Psalm 20, verse 4, 
New Living Translation, it says, May He grant you your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. That's a good scripture to pray. Yes, it is. Next, seek out those who can best help you move forward and move out of your personal wilderness into the promised land and many times out of your comfort zone into where you need to be going. <clears throat> Proverbs 15, 22 in the New Living Translation says, Plans go wrong for lack of advice. Many advisors bring success. God is a planner, which means that we need to be one too. If you want to be a winner in every area of your life, as God is definitely a winning choice, following his lead. Amen. Amen. Number three, priorities. Winners, winners continually think about their priorities. As a born-again born believer, we should do no less. That's it. We should not. In fact, our priorities as a believer can be summed up in one verse. Mm. Matthew 6, 33. That's it. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It's important to note the spiritual progression of this verse. There are seven key words or groups of words. Number one, seek ye first. Number two, the kingdom of God. Number three, his righteousness. And then, after you've put God first. Number five, all. Number six, these things. Number seven, shall be added unto you. You know, the contemporary English version, honey, of Matthew 6, 33, concludes by saying, then the other things will be yours as well. Hallelujah. That's a real promise. That is a promise for sure. Number four, money. When it comes to money, we need to think well before we earn it, spend it, save it, invest it, waste it, and give it. First of all, let's cover just a few basics. Money is neither good nor evil. Money is good or evil depending on who controls it, whose hands it is, whose it is that determines its destiny. If you spend money properly, providing for your family and supporting your church and, you know, prospering your community and those in the kingdom of God, well, that's good money. If you use your money to reach unbelievers with the gospel, that's a great use of good money, advancing the kingdom. However, if money is used for evil purposes, then money works for the kingdom of darkness. It's just really that simple. Money is letting what's inside of you come out. And often when people get money, they, you find out what's inside of That's them. That's true. By the way, it, they spend it. So you see how we spend money, the money we have determines truly whether our money does good things or not so good things. When we have plenty of money, it gives us the freedom to be able to do a lot of good things, the things we want to do, um, when we want to do them, how we want to do them and to whom we want to do them with. So that is important for us to think about before we spend any money. Make sure that you've counted the cost. In Luke 14, 28, New Life Version, it says, if one of you wants to build a large building, you would sit down first and think of how much money it would take to build it. You would see if you had enough money to finish it. The point is, when we get our money, say you got a Christmas bonus coming. Maybe it's good for a family or a couple to sit down and decide, where does that money really need to go? Amen. Number five, time. As a boy, I was fascinated by the book, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. The thought of traveling not only through time zones, but time periods intrigued me. As I began to celebrate each birthday after my 60th, I become more conscious of time, wanting to make sure that I create memories that will last a lifetime with my fine wife, our children, and grand sugars. Mm -hmm. I think a lot more about how I use my time. I should say that. Too. Psalm 90, 12. Psalm 90, verse 12, contemporary English, contemporary English version. Teach us to use wisely all the time we have. Yeah, I feel the scripture in Psalms is saying that we should truly number, take charge of, 
and plan to use our days wisely. Make a list each night of what you need to accomplish the next day. Assign a priority task to each or priority to each task and be about the business. Avoid distractions or people who will prevent you from achieving the things you've purposed to achieve before the day's ends. In the next 24 hours, you're going to be given a precious gift. Amen. Not money, not silver, gold, or real estate, but something far more valuable. You'll be the recipient of 86,400 seconds or another day of life. The only restriction that we're given is that we must spend it, invest it, or use every minute. There's no rollover benefit to our time. Simply said, use each day wisely before midnight or it's gone forever. Wow. Wow. That is a wow scripture. That is a wow scripture. <laughs> we need to think about using God's wisdom to bring increase in our lives. Proverbs 9-11, mm. 9-11 classic amplified. For by me, wisdom from God, your days shall be multiplied mm. and the years of your life shall be increased. That's good. Something to think about for sure. Number six, problem solving. Everyone faces problems. The difference between a winner and a non-winner, shall we say, in life comes from what we, well, what we think about on a particular problem and how we face it and then what we do about it. Sure. There are seven ways that we suggest that every problem solver should think through. One, what do you think about a problem will determine whether or not you believe you can solve it? Dr. Robert Schuller once said, again and again, it's Im the impossible problem is solved when we see that the problem is only a tough decision waiting to be made. Number two, we really ought to meditate on that one. You True. must recognize that you can't solve problems, your problems, but, hallelujah, God, God can. can. Amen, honey. Are you ready for another wow scripture? I, just, I love this one. I do too. Psalm 34, 19. You ought to carry it around in your pocket. This is from the New Century Version. People who do what is right may have many problems, but the Lord whoo, will solve them all. How? That is a problem solver that you want to carry around, like I said. <clears throat> Number three, take your problem to God and no one else. I mean, but God. That he should be the first one we talk to. Then if he directs you to somewhere else, well, maybe. But take it to him and say, how do I help me solve this problem? Psalm 142, 2, He's New the Century one Version. Well, it's true, but sometimes he'll lead you to somebody, go, go see this person or go That's talk true. to that person. He's done that with us. I pour out my problems to him. I tell him my troubles. He should be the first one we turn to. The first. Exodus 18, 19, New International Reader's Version. Listen to me, I'll give you some advice and may God be with you. You must speak to God for the people take their problems to Him. That was what was said. Number four, you must learn to solve small problems if you ever want to be given the opportunity to solve bigger problems. The problem is <laughs> that sometimes we you know, push small problems aside and then we end up with bigger problems, but we should have solved the smaller problems. Problems are opportunities to show ourselves capable. We need to think of it in those terms. 1 Corinthians 6, 2 in the contemporary English version says, don't you know that God's people will judge the world? And if you are going to judge the world, can't you settle small problems? Number five, Problems help you build your endurance and stick to itiveness. You get practiced at it. Romans 5 3, New Living Translation says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. Listen, if God's given you a problem, then He's going to help you solve it because it's going to get you ready for the next problem that comes up. So you need to be paying attention. Number six, when you become a problem solver, this is important, you become more requested, not only in the world, but in the kingdom of God, and that's where you want it. Daniel 5, 12, 
contemporary English version says he also changed the man's name from Daniel to Belshazzar. Not only is he wise and intelligent, but he can explain dreams and riddles and solve difficult problems. Send for Daniel, and he will tell you what the writing means. And number seven, when we're solving problems, we receive rewards. People love problem solvers. In Daniel 5.16, contemporary English version also, it says, but I have to been told that you understand everything and that you can solve difficult problems. Now then, if you can read this writing and tell me what it means, you will become the third most powerful man in my kingdom. You will wear royal purple robes and you have a gold chain around your neck. Oh. Albert Einstein said one time, the significant problems we face cannot be solved at the same level of thinking we were at when we created them. There's a lot to that. Oh, yes. Change your way of thinking and you will solve your problems. We can't look at it as something to avoid, but it's something to tackle and with God's help, overcome. And wow. Number seven. Hallelujah. Attitude. Here are seven keys that every winner in life masters. First, have a never give up attitude. Mm -mm. Here are seven scriptural reasons why you should never think about giving up. Second Corinthians 4 8. I love this. Second Corinthians 4 8, contemporary in the church. We often suffer, but we're never crushed. Right. Even when we don't know what to do, we never give up. Luke 18, 1, 18, 1, New Living Translation. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. Romans 12, 11, 12, 11, contemporary English version. Never give up. Eagerly follow the Holy Spirit and serve the Lord. Psalm 71, 14. 7114, contemporary English verse. I will never give up hope or stop praising you. Mm, hallelujah. Number two, never let your victories or success go to your head. Always, re always remember why you are, where you are, and who gave you life, eternal and abundant, along with a vision for your future. If we continually remember and honor God for what he's done for us, then we'll always keep victories in a proper and scriptural perspective. Deuteronomy 26.11, 26.11, New Living Translation. Afterward, you may go and celebrate because of all the good things the Lord your God has given you. In your household, remember to include the Levites and the foreigners living among you in celebration. Number three, never let failures go to your heart. That's right. Over the years, sadly, I've had a number of people refer to themselves as failures without realizing the spiritual impact of such an incorrect and wrong confession. We've said this for years. Always remember that failure is an event. It's not who you are. That's right. When you try something and it doesn't work, that doesn't make you a failure. It just means you can't do something else. You can try something else. You can try something That's else. That's it. That will work. Have you ever used yeah. cleaning product 409? Guess how many solutions they were made that didn't work? 408. That's it. <laughs> Same thing with WD-40. It was the 40th try that it worked. The Model T, Models A through S didn't work. Did Henry Ford of any of these other entrepreneurs, did they see themselves as failures? Absolutely not. Never eternalize, internalize. Amen. You're like a success or condemn yourself for trying something that didn't work. George Washington Carver once said, 99% of failures come from people who have a habit of making excuses. Mm. Number four, never get hardening of the attitude. 
Never give up on people or ideas. If you try an idea and it didn't work, perfect it until it does work. If someone betrays your confidence, don't give up on people. Ask your Heavenly Father to give you a godly friend. Amen. If something doesn't work, keep trying to find something that will. Keep your attitude positive, your, your persistence steadfast, and never allow the enemy mm. to harden your heart to the possibilities of success That's it. that God is sending your way. Amen. And understand that God is sending possibilities and opportunities your way. No matter what you're going through right now, they're on the way. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. on the way. That's it. Number five, never allow your spirit to become anemic. The best way to keep your attitude fresh, vibrant, positive, and full of life is by spending time in the Word and in the presence of God. If you get mentally drained, feeling lifeless, mm. you have realized you got unlimited access to the greatest energy yes. energy drink of all time. That's it. The Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. When you're feeling anemic, you need a fresh infusion of the power in the blood. Amen. There is power in the blood. That's it. Six, never think you did it alone. Mm. This one key, you don't even have to think about. If it weren't for God, you wouldn't be thinking, breathing, or even living. Always remember who gives you what you got. Mm. Romans 12, 3, 12, 3, the Message Bible. I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for what God has given me, and especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. Living then, as every one of you does, in pure grace. It's important that you not misinterpret ourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. But no, God brings it all to you. Mm. This is amazing scripture. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what He does for us. Not by what we are and what we do for Him. Always remember who gave you the opportunity to be successful. 2 Corinthians 2.12, 2.12, New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Never doubt for a moment that God's thinking about you and your success. I want you to plant this thought deeply in your heart. God is thinking about you. Right now. God is thinking about Judy. God is thinking about Norma. God is thinking about Diane. God's thinking about Stephen. God's thinking about Farley. God's thinking about Fred. God's thinking about Maya. God's thinking about Sonia. Mm -hmm. Ralph. And Mama. And Mama. Mama's watching. My too. Mama's watching. 93 year old powerhouse. powerhouse. <laughs> we both came out yeah. with that the same Yes, way. we did. We're in sync. Yep. Yeah. We are. Amen. We want you to plant this thought deeply in your heart. Yes. God is thinking about you. You may have felt that nobody knew you were alive. Mm. Maybe that includes your family. But that's just not true. Because God, your Heavenly Father, yes. is thinking about you. Psalm 4017. 4017, the Living Bible. I am poor and weak, mm. yet the Lord is thinking, thinking about, about me, me right, right now. now. That's a great scripture. I am poor and weak, but the, but Lord the Lord is thinking about me right now. You know, we need to be careful too, honey, because things can get depressing. Sometimes around this time of year, there are people who fall into depression or True. start thinking about things in the past. Look, the past cannot be changed. And the future is not lived yet. You know, if you're if you're feeling guilt, it's because you're thinking about things that have already happened. They're done. If you're thinking about what the future is, then you're anxious for the future. It hasn't come yet. The way to be present is to be present in the present. This is the time. God is not the great I was way back then. He's not the great I will be. He is the great I am. Right now. He's going to. That's exactly right. It is a right now thing and a right now thought. 
Don't let things drag you down. Don't give the enemy, don't give the enemy the satisfaction of taking you out or depressing you or making you think that things are not going to turn there, out. There are people that think because about you that you don't even know about. That's true. I, I remember a lot of people. I remember once one of the first ministry yes, calls I, I ever made. I remember that. And that was years ago. Years ago. And I just happened to look at this lady's letter and I thought I'll give her a call. I called and she answered the phone. I told her who I was. After a while, she answered the phone. Yeah, wasn't after it? a while. And I told her who I was. She started crying. And when I tell her I wanted to pray with her, she kept on crying. Couldn't stop crying. She couldn't stop. She cried the whole time we were on the phone. She cried the whole time that I prayed for her. And when I got through, she said, Brother Harry, are you wondering why I was crying? I said, well, kind of. She said, when you called, phone started ringing. I was kneeling beside my bed. And I was praying and going, God, does anybody know that I'm alive? Does anybody care? Does anybody know? And then the phone started ringing. I almost didn't answer it. But I went and answered it. And it was you. And I know that God knows I'm alive. And that's what you need to do. Don't get down That's it. this holiday season. That's it. Think on the pure, the powerful, the positive. And go out and help somebody else. Yeah. I want to ask the you to please, please be praying. Uh, Terry Johnson, who mm -hmm. is the head of WHFL. No. W okay. Well, just the, the radio the anyhow, the TV TV station, station you're watching. <laughs> We're his terrible. mama had yes, emergency surgery. surgery two but days ago. But she did well. She came through it well. Yes. But if you would, please pray for Miss Johnson. That's it. And uh, for Terry and the family. That's it. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And praise his name. Come on. That's it. Go to heraldherring.com. Click the button that says sow a seed. If you feel led, sow a seed. Just do what God tells you to do. That's, That's all, all we ever else. ask. Until next time, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich. We thoughts. love you. We appreciate you. We do. Bye-bye.